Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Hi, I'm Kelly. And welcome you to Mornings with Brian and Tyler. Today we're in Romans 3, 27 through 31. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then make the void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. All right. <clears throat> this uh, goes to the question, uh, you know, people that have a hard time with it today, does God have a different plan for the Jew than he does for the Gentile? No, the answer is no. Both Jew and Gentile are justified or saved through faith. Um one by the means of the faith that they have already the jew transitioning to the messiah is just the next logical progression the gentile coming out of nothing into faith in christ but it's still the same faith it still all revolves around the messiah but the key is for no matter who it is it's still faith and so there's two laws in operation, the law of works and the law of faith. And it's the law of faith that justifies us, not the law of works. And people have a hard time with this. I don't really understand why, but you've heard me ask the question before, if you've been with us on these videos for a while. Would a Boeing, Boeing 747 have flown in the days of Moses? And some people, no, brother. Why not? Boeing is still a Boeing, and as long as all the things are still there to make it go, it still could have flown. They would have flown. What's the key thing that you need? Proper runway and uh, a pilot. As long as you have someone who knows how to use the law of lift and the law of thrust, a plane will fly. A plane might fly with someone who doesn't know what they're doing. They can probably get it off the ground. They probably won't be as successful in landing it because a proper landing also involves an appreciation of the law of gravity. But just because we'll say, we'll say that when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, did they know about the law of thrust and the law of lift and the law of gravity? I doubt that they probably had formulated anything specific on it. But does their lack of formulating the the statements about it does it change that it was already in existence or did the law of lift not come into effect until kitty hawk north carolina in 1903 they said well they had balloons they had oh wait so we had the ability to fly we knew there were certain other laws that we could apply to fly well it's no different with the law of faith the issue is whether or not you learn what the scripture teaches about how faith works. I would never try in my pickup to jump Snake Canyon or any of those. Okay? Not, no. Why? You ain't going that far. You know, yeah, not, not happening. Okay? You know, Evil Knievel with his jump back in the day. Well, yeah, with enough speed on a motorcycle, it wouldn't have been an issue of lift. It was an issue of law of inertia. Once he hit the end of his jump, did he have enough momentum to utilize a body in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force? Well, what was the outside force that was acting on him the whole time? Well, two of them, actually, drag and gravity. 
to get to the other side while there was ground before the ground that he could land safely on was higher <laughs> than his own elevation. Well, he said, no, it worked out for him. I mean, he's still alive and, you know, yeehaw. I thought he died a while ago. Well, uh, okay. He yes, was, he survived. He was still those, alive. Yeah, yes. he was still alive. Yeah, he's dead now. But okay. it okay. wasn't that jump that killed him. It was. It was just, you know, naturalish causes. Ish. You know, uh, people think maybe he'd lived longer if he wouldn't have done all that daredevil stuff. But, but then if he would have, nobody would have known who he was because he's the ultimate daredevil. Um, but that's the thing. You have to know how stuff works. And you said, well, I don't know how, you know, my light works. I just flip a switch and it's on. Oh, wait. So you understand at least the most basic principle. You have to flip the switch. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same way with law of faith. So this week we're going to look at what does Romans have for us on the law of faith. How does it work? And uh, it's your choice whether or not you pay attention to it. You say, well, I don't care about flying, so I don't care about the laws of flight. Okay. But if you ever get in a plane, I hope that the people who designed the plane and the people who are flying the plane care about the laws of flight. Otherwise, it'll be a very short trip for you, um, one way or another. So, law of faith, it just means that your Christian life will be way harder than it has to be because the Christian life operates by the law of faith. Anything you want to add, my brother? No, sir. All right. I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we bid you good morning.